you did what to add another two and a half gig nick to your minis forum single two gig nick what <laughs> All right, I got it out of my system. I did the video series on the Forbidden Router. We've got the ultimate home server guides on the level one forum for building your own Zettelkasten or your own ultimate media server or your own you know, repository of all human knowledge for when the internet goes down and you need your own local copy of Wikipedia. Okay, well, maybe that last one is coming. But I wanted to kind of do a hardware roundup for home server because in the past, conventional wisdom was, hey, get some enterprise cast off stuff, run that at home, and it's great. You might get a rack mount server that's uh, hot and loud and uses a lot of electricity. More and more posts I see on the level one forum, a lot of people are not willing to run the enterprise cast off stuff in their home lab. I mean, sure, yes. There are people at home that have a 42U rack or multiple 42U racks. I'm guilty of that myself, as a matter of fact. But uh, it can run into a lot of electricity. I've definitely noticed those energy bills creeping up and it's not great. So I thought we'd do a little roundup of some of the stuff that I've done videos on lately in the last six months to a year, because I really think these are incredible, tremendous opportunities for building out your home server or rethinking your home server strategy, your home lab um, for the coming years. Plus also, this is a great platform to learn new skills. If you, uh, are doing a job that you're not happy with and you want to pivot to something else, having a home lab really is a great way to build those skills. You can do everything you need to do on computers, even almost as modest as a Raspberry Pi, to do things like clustering, Ansible, DevOps stuff. You can run your own Git server that has orchestration and deployment. You can do pretty much anything that you need as far as web servers and web technology goes because, hey, those, those basically free Amazon instances I'm not sure a Raspberry Pi doesn't have more horsepower than those. So if you can learn on those, you can definitely learn on the, uh, the Raspberry Pi stuff. And there's a lot of software stuff in our home lab series that applies to all of that. But we can talk about hardware and we can talk about it from a power saving angle. So first off, cast off enterprise thing. Okay, I've got the small form factor Dell here. This is probably uh, the direction that you might go in for cast off enterprise stuff. This is a seventh gen, I think, Intel. So a lot of businesses are getting rid of their seventh gen to prepare for the upgrade to Windows 11 for the eighth gen. Or conversely, your company is not preparing to go to Windows 11 anytime soon because they're on sixth or seventh gen Intel systems. This is borderline. So a modern system is gonna be much more power efficient than this thing. Uh, this, this thing, when it's fully loaded, is using a little over 100 watts. When it's not loaded, it's idling. It's like 60, 65 watts, something like that. And the modern Alder Lake equivalent to this is more like idling at like 35 watts. So it's like half the idle power. Idling at 35 watts, you probably left the light on and it's probably worse than that. The nice thing about this chassis is that it's got two expansion slots. This particular one has an X16 slot. It's half height because it's not, you can't fit a full card in there. And then there's another one that's PCI Express by four. So that's pretty cool. Different Optiplexes have different PCIe configurations. Some might be X16 by nothing. Some might be like by four by one. Some might be X16 by one. It just depends. And this is borderline, like I say. The other downside of this is only got a single NIC. All the time when you're running stuff in your home lab, you want multiple ethernet interfaces. If nothing else, it makes it a little easy from a virtualization standpoint. And this NIC, you know, in this older hardware, you're probably not gonna find, especially a workstation. Well, you know, <laughs> commodity data input drone class workstation. Uh, it's not gonna be faster than a gigabit. It's a real problem. Now I've got a solution for that that I'm really excited about. I'm gonna show you. We're actually gonna add another NIC without giving up our PCIe slot to the ASRock desk meet that we did a video on a little while ago. So that's the teaser for what's coming. But as far as older ha enterprise hardware, this is, this is what goes. Now, another thing that I wanted to ramble about in the power usage conversation, this system is my open air AMD AM4 uh, server. And I've got three and a half inch drives in here. There's some, there's some good video of this that I covered previously. This is rocking an ASRock uh, rack motherboard. It's AM4, 16 
cores, 128 gigabytes of RAM on this platform. This is really good. This is an incredible home. You're going to spend a little bit of money for this, but you know, if you're rocking a 3950X, the 5950X is on sale in terms of like power utilization, idle current, blah, blah, blah. This is also will idle on the order of like 40 watts, 45 watts, especially if you're not running a lot of mechanical drives and depending a little bit on your power supply. You can actually enable a, a, an option in the BIOS called the low idle current, which will reduce the power usage by like five, six watts when it's idle. But that also depends on your power supply, because if you turn that on, your power supply can't handle that. The power supply won't supply clean power to the system, and then it'll lock up and be weird. That's a whole other conversation for another day. But for the last several years, running AM4 for your home server solution, it's quiet, it doesn't produce a lot of heat, it doesn't get hot. It is awesome. It is super, super awesome. It's great. It is a little bit DIY because those Dell small form factor systems are not really, you know, nobody's building those out of AM4 and the ones that are typically are limiting it to a 65 watt TDP CPU. So a 5900, no X would work in that 12 core, but the 5950X, you can forget it. And this is pretty much, you know, the scythe cooler that I've got on this and the other uh, rest of the system. I'm really happy with this, the open air, it's really awesome. If you want something that's a little bit more, uh, I'm gonna run VMware and I'm gonna get a lot of stuff and money is no object, this is the Intel NUC. This one is actually based on a Xeon and it has error correcting SODIMs in it, which is just bananas. It has two PCI Ex Express expansion slots, X16 or it'll run it by eight by eight. This is just a desktop class Xeon, so it's not anything super fancy, but 32 or 64 gigabytes of, of RAM is possible. And we have dual built-in Intel NICs plus Thunderbolt. If you're rocking VMware, the Thunderbolt's not gonna help you, but if you're running other operating systems, you may be able to use the Thunderbolt to have even a little bit more uh, connectivity for PCI Express or whatever, another four lanes, something like that. But there's also an M.2 on board here. So if you need more NICs, I'll show you how without actually using a PCIe expansion slot. We'll come back to that. Then I've got these two systems from Mini's Forum. This one, I think is a 5700G. It only has a single 2.5 gigabit NIC. So Dems, it has one M.2 and SATA. We're gonna add another NIC to this as well, at least potentially. I'll show you. You can kinda, you're, you're already typing in the comments what I'm about to do. This is the other Mini's Forum system. This is the one where you can add a GPU to it after the fact. It's got a, a door here. You just pop the door off the bottom and then you pop it in this little storage rack thing and then you got a full PCI Express expansion slot which you can add a NIC to or whatever else. But on the inside, this actually has two M.2 slots, one here and one here, in addition to the M.2 E key, which is up here for the Wi-Fi, but it only has one built-in 2.5 gig NIC. We can add two more NICs to this, no problem, without using our PCIe expansion slot. And finally, Supermicro. I've done some videos on some Supermicro servers. This is a six core, it's, it's a Xeon base. This motherboard has two built-in one gigabit NICs. You can, of course, add a 10 gigabit half height card over here. Didn't even open it for this video. Boom, look at that. Intel X550, half height, dual 10 gigabit connections, and it's gonna take up a PCI Express by four interface. This is really awesome. But you know what else is PCI Express by four? Your M.2. Check this out. This is an Intel i225V on a very short M.2 card. Two and a half gigabit on that tiny little thing. All of a sudden, a whole world of possibilities have opened up for us that were previously unavailable. Now you might be thinking, well, there's no, there's no ethernet connection on this. How's, how's it gonna do it? Let's get a pin header. And the pin header has a breakout cable that goes to this. It's definitely not ideal in terms of uh, a lot of things. <laughs> Signal integrity, two and a half gigabit. Uh, there's some, some rules that may have been bent a little here, but two and a half gig. And it, just because it's on a, a slot cover doesn't mean that you have to use it on a blank slot. And actually in the box, you've also got the half height cover. So with things like our Dell small form factor, you can totally use that and it's fine. Uh, you could, you know, the small form factor desktop, this would fit in that and be fine. It will fit in our, this system, which it does have an M.2. It'll work. We can get creative. I've got another one for another project. So what does that look like? Well, in our minis forum, in this one, we would actually pop out our M.2 storage and switch to SATA for storage, and then we would add it here. And then we would have two 2.5 gigabit NICs on our eight core Ryzen system. And then this would make a heck of a, a router, 
that is insanely high powered and can run virtual machines and can have 64 gigabytes of memory and a whole bunch of other things that are really exciting. So, now if you're gonna rock the desk meat for a home server, you can do some really awesome things. You can use two three and a half inch drives in here, two two and a half inch drives, and it's got dual M.2 ports for whatever. Now, the, the M.2 port on the back with the pin header it's probably not going to clear and there's not a mounting screw anyway so when this is in place you know it's a little problematic but there is enough room for the m.2 on the other side and that will still leave our connection for our gpu but you wouldn't use a gpu in a home server except maybe for transcoding um, but it'll still leave our other m.2 slot free on this side so we can have one m.2 for storage and one m.2 for additional networking or we can go hog wild and install you know a 10 gigabit card or a multi-port 10 gigabit card on the back and have 10 gig ports here or even 25 gig ports plus our onboard two and a half gig port plus another two and a half gig port so we get four network ports in this tiny little thing now i will tell you that they do actually make m.2s that have dual NICs. so you can get one m.2 that has two two and a half gig NICs on them although the lead time for those is uh, too long for this video, so I decided to get just two uh, individual M.2s with the 2.5 gig because I think that'll work really well for my use case. We also should talk a little bit about clustering because you can take a bunch of these small form factor machines and in software build one uh, cluster that shows up in your network as one device but actually has a lot of high availability and failover and a lot of really fun stuff like that. You can run Kubernetes in a cluster on a real hardware cluster and it's still only using like 90 watts of power. So all this is really cool. And like I say, I was sort of foreshadowing a little bit. Ryzen was definitely the low power option for lots of horsepower. Eight cores, if you're willing to pop the top off of this and live with a, with a machine that basically has, you know, half its network card hanging out of the top, this will give you dual two and a half gig NICs plus two USB plus two more USB plus USB-C, display port and HDMI. This is insanely powerful. This would be a, a really nice portable machine. You can still rock that two and a half inch SATA SSD. Uh, but yeah, you are coloring outside the, the lines a little bit. Maybe I could design a 3D printable top. A replacement, <laughs> a replacement printable top for the mini forum machine where the, the ethernet plug is on top. And so it's, uh, it's definitely Frankenstein's mini forum, but that's definitely an option. However, there is a challenger on the horizon, and I was gonna make this video after I got my hands on some more hardware, but it has been basically unobtainium. This is an Alder Lake i3-12100. This CPU is like $80 on sale. Yeah, you gotta have a micro center, or you gotta wait for the right coupon, or you gotta wait for the right e-tailer, you gotta go to eBay, but four Alder Lake P cores. Alder Lake, is very, very fast on a single core, much faster than AMD, especially when we're talking about, you know, a lower end six core part in terms of single thread performance. When we're talking about networking and doing traffic filtering and Samba and that kind of stuff, single thread performance is still king. And four P cores with hyper threading in a network appliance is really incredible. And you can also step up to the 12400. This is about $200, although you can get it on sale for like a 120. This is the i5-12400. This is six Alder Lake P cores. So here's the critical piece of information. The W680 motherboard, I've had multiple contacts tell me that W680 will support error correcting memory for the i5-12400. So you could rock ECC. The other nice thing is that when it's idle, that 12400 is gonna be pretty sippy on the power. Now, when it's when it's doing something, it's gonna use a lot of power. Well, not a lot of power, but you know, it's gonna use more power. But if you if you built something that's really, really fire breathing around this six core Alder Lake CPU, there are motherboards with the W680 chipset that are advertised out there that have even onboard 10 gigabit. And that's probably worth the price of admission, a couple of hundred dollars. So, you know, for $500 with six Alder Lake P cores, it's gonna run circles around everything except dedicated silicon, because dedicated silicon for doing packet routing is gonna use less power and, uh, and, and just be better at it. But it's gonna be a little less flexible. So, really interesting stuff. And that's bordering on, you know, the best case scenario for something like this, 
or you've got the remote management and the IPMI. The W680 motherboards do have remote management, they have the A speed, and they have everything else. And so I think that this, as an option for home labbing and home routering, even though this is a new CPU, it is so much faster than some of the old cast off enterprise stuff at a relatively low cost that it may not make sense, especially when you consider the fire breathing behemoth, you know, the Dell R720 server. This, this, this option is gonna pay for itself in electricity energy savings in a very short order. So we don't have a W680. Are there other options? Well, there are low cost B660 motherboards. We get the Azrock. Uh, 660M Steel Legend. This motherboard's actually kind of overkill for uh, even the 12400. You could probably step down to an even less expensive, approximately 100-ish dollar motherboard. Now, again, these don't make great network appliances because you've only got the single NIC. In this case, I think this is the one that has the two and a half gig NIC. But we've got two M.2 slots plus four onboard SATA, or six onboard SATA, actually. So six onboard SATA, DDR4, yeah, it's not gonna run error correcting memory. That's kind of the downside, but you could have six Alder Lake P cores, and then for another $20, two two and a half gig NICs, or $40, three two and a half gig NICs, and you haven't used any of your PCI Express expansion slots. If uh, 10 gigabit will do it for you, well, you could do a dual port 10 gig NIC. On eBay, those are usually like 40, 50 bucks, so that's maybe a little better but these won't do two and a half or five gig. They'll only do one or 10 gig. So a little bit of a little bit of a wrinkle there. And so with this platform, you could build, you know, the forbidden router or the, or the ultimate home server, or just use something like this as a, as a home lab server appliance. It's totally fine. I really do like this option, except for the lack of error correcting memory. If error correcting memory on the W680 chipset works with the i5, that'll be really impressive. It's not really much of a departure if it works with the i3. Historically, Intel has permitted ECC memory to work with a lot of the Pentiums and i3s at the very low end in, you know, LGA 1200 and older machines like this. This Super Micro, if it had an i3 in it, it's got a Xeon in it. The Xeon's much better. But if it had the i3 in it, it would still support error correcting memory because of the chipset on the motherboard. That's just a market segmentation thing. It's not a technical thing. Intel could totally allow ECC on this motherboard, but then it would be up to ASRock to actually test and confirm that that works. And that's not a can of worms that Intel wants to open. So we're just stuck waiting on W680 motherboards that I can't get my hands on, even though they were announced months ago. Anyway, I think Alder Lake is promising, but lack of parts means that, you know, if you want to go for the ultimate power saving, it's still rising and it's still, it's fast enough. With an eye toward the future, Alder Lake P-Cores in your network appliance, it's gonna beat the pants off of even old Xeons. And uh, maybe we can do some videos to prove it. What kind of benchmarks would you like to see? I don't know, I really think we can do some really interesting stuff here. All right, enough rambling. Let's actually do something exciting. If you wanna participate, join me in the forums, level one. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.